Yo, what's good, y'all? It's Trill, and today I have two Galaxy Book S's here. So I have one with a Snapdragon processor, a NAR processor, and then I also got one with an Intel processor. So we about to go and see in this video which one's faster for a $50 difference. All right, so I just want to say real quick, with the models that I got, it should be pretty easy to discern which one is which. So this is going to be the Snapdragon 8CX one, and then over here, this is going to be the Intel Core i5 one with this earthy gold color. And Samsung just came out with this Intel version right here. As you can see, I just unboxed this thing recently. It was my last video, and I also have here the Snapdragon version with the ARM processor. So we already know about the whole talk with ARM processors and everything with Apple releasing one and everything like that. So think of it more like an ARM processor but except on here you can actually run x86 apps on here natively so you can run x64 apps on here too with arm that's just not possible but since this is an intel processor you can do that so as you can see here i have google chrome out here the x64 version is running just fine i don't got no problems with it and then on here i have chrome out here too but the problem with that is like it's not the x64 version because well it can't support x64 so it's running x86 and at that it's emulated so it's not going to be like a native x86 app so it's definitely going to be a lot slower that's why i don't use it on here because it just crashes sometimes and i just use microsoft edge so I actually use microsoft edge on here because that runs arm 64 and arm 64 apps on here runs the best so now i have geekbench 5 on both of these they're both on the x86 versions now automatically this has an advantage because this is an emulated but i still want to go and see what results do we get with that and i really want to say real quick that just using these both here i can already tell y'all that the arm processor is definitely a lot faster than this intel one so i wasn't expecting it but yeah this is definitely more powerful like when i'm using this i don't really feel any lag or anything but then when i'm using the intel core i5 one as you can see here with the sticker i definitely feel that lag and also there's some other things that i like about this more like this has you know lte and everything in the us we don't have lte with the intel versions but as you can see here they have the same exact build so besides the processor there's really nothing different besides that this just has Wi-Fi and no LTE. And as you can see here, these things are both fully charged. So this is on 100%. As you can see here, I have Microsoft Edge and all those other apps closed. And then if I go over here to the Intel version, again, we have 100%. It's on best performance. We just don't have a best performance option on here. So I'm going to just assume that it's always running on best performance. And no, with these laptops anyways, if you plug them in, then it's not going to boost the performance or anything. They just always run at max speed as long as you got it set to max speed. So now let's go ahead later here and we're about to go and do this speed test here with Geekbench 5. So if I go ahead and zoom in here to the specs on this screen with Geekbench 5, you can see everything here like the Intel Core i5, 1.40 gigahertz. We have a base frequency of 1.38 gigahertz and then the maximum frequency of 2.88 gigahertz. That's what we have the architecture set to and then as you can see here we have a Snapdragon 8CX with 2.84 gigahertz. So automatically that's going to be faster than your Intel version version and it's not even that far off on the maximum frequency on here you can see that we have 7.80 gigs of ram which is basically 8 gigs of ram and then on the snapdragon version we just have 8 gigs of ram same storage and everything like i said nothing really changed between these two so now it's actually time for a speed test so i said this before and i'm gonna say it again speed tests don't actually show the real world performance but i thought i'd go ahead and show you all the results on this anyways i don't usually do speed tests but with these arm processors and everything like i'm really interested so i want to go and see what we get out of this so what we're gonna go and do is we're gonna run a cpu benchmark at the same exact time and then we'll go and fast forward through this so let's go and do this now three two one go and there we go so now it's actually benchmarking and i'll go and fast forward through this and then we'll see the results that we get up on here All right, so the results is in, and let's go and check out the results. Yo, 
Whoa, big difference there in the multi-core score. All right, let's go and zoom up out of this. So look at this, y'all. So as you can see here with the single core score with the Intel version, we have 898 and on the Snapdragon version, we have 719. But when we get to the multi-core score, yeah, we got a big difference here. So with the Intel version, we have 1748. And then with the Snapdragon version, we have 28. 58 that's crazy yo i was not expecting that all right there so yeah that's interesting so for 50 buck difference you get way more multi-core performance with your snapdragon version but then if you look over here with your intel version on a single core score yeah we definitely get a faster score but it's nowhere near as dramatic as the multi-core score so to be honest with y'all like this really ain't the move i ain't really feeling that so not with the snapdragon version i ain't disappointed in this but with the intel version yeah no that's just why that's what i was saying with you know using these two i just feel like way more performance out of this snapdragon version than the intel version so if you want to actually go ahead and look at these results yourself i'll go and leave the links down below so you can actually go ahead and view these pages yourself so look in the description in the pinned comment below but yeah so if we go back here to geekbench 5 as you can see here with the intel version we have five cores and then with the Snapdragon version, we have eight cores. Now let's actually go back here to the results. So let's scroll down here some more. Let's look at the system information and there you go. So there's all your information. You can go and pause that and read for yourself if you want. But now let's go down here to the single core performance. So there we go. Let's go and get that there. All right, so that's all you need to know. Go and pause that if you want to read it. Now let's go and keep scrolling down. So let's go over here to where it says camera and all that. All right, so there we go. So now let's keep scrolling down here to the multi-core performance. And as you can see here, if we look at things like navigation, the Snapdragon version wins it out easily. Text compression, image compression, like literally everything is just getting beat out here with this Intel version. And then here we are at the end of the page. So yo, this is crazy, man. Look at the ray tracing performance here on the Snapdragon version. Yo, that's wild. All right, so as you can see here, I'm declaring the Snapdragon version the winner of the speed test and just using these things on the day to day, like I said already. So, whoo, man, was y'all expecting these results? I definitely wasn't. Let me know in the comments below what you was expecting. Because, yeah, I mean, it does have this earthy gold color, which looks really dope here in the US and also has x64 support. It's just not gonna compete with Snapdragon right now. Intel really needs to put in that work if they want to stay relevant. Like, I'm just telling y'all that right now. Like, Apple's ditching them. Samsung got this Galaxy Book S here with ARM. Like, who knows what their future's looking like. But the fact that we have LTE here, as you can see here, I'm connected to Verizon Wireless and just so many more advantages. I just gotta stay with Snapdragon. Because, yeah, while the app support may not be the best right now, it's going to get better. Like you see all these companies like Samsung and Apple moving towards ARM. So I'm not going to really be that surprised if we get a lot of app support coming up soon. Like, trust me, we'll get Chrome support for ARM 64. That was already in the talks for a little bit. I don't really know what happened to that, but the app support right now is decent and we can emulate apps so we can get by right now. For most things anyway. So yeah, I'm going to get out of here, y'all. Which one do you prefer and which one do you think you would get? Because for the Snapdragon version, it's going to run you a thousand bucks. And then for this Intel version, that's going to run you 950 bucks, which in my opinion, ain't worth it. Because for 50 bucks less, you lose a lot of performance and you lose LTE. So you may not care about LTE because you're going to be like, well, I wasn't going to put LTE in my Galaxy Book anyways, but it's still nice to have here. Because like, let's say you want to pop your phone SIM card out of your phone real quick and pop it into your Galaxy Book real quick. You can do that. So I'm going to get out of here, y'all. Unfortunately, this thing do not get my Genix stamp of approval. It just don't cut it for me. That's why this got the Genix stamp of approval, because it does get it. But the Intel version, nah, I can't do that. And basically, if you don't know what that means with this not being Genix approved, that means I don't recommend it. So yeah, get the Snapdragon version. If you really need the X64 apps and the slim and light design and the phone charger that plugs into this and everything like that, then I mean, I don't really know if I can still recommend it then. I would say look for another thousand dollar laptop. Like look for something like a uh, Notebook 9 Pro from 2019 from Samsung or something like that. Yeah, you might not be able to plug it in with your phone charger or anything. Well, not fast anyways. And this thing might get hot at times because, you know, Intel. But you're getting so much more out of something like this with this Notebook 9 Pro. I mean, you get a pen with it and everything. But thanks for watching, y'all. If you like this video, go and give this video a like. And if you really liked it, go and subscribe. But go and follow me on my social media, Eddie Said Tech on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. But Instagram and Twitter is where I'm most active. So Intel, you really disappointed me here with your Core i5. And I'm kind of scared for your future. Even though we're going to need your processors for these really high-end PCs. But thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. And peace out.